Hello YouTubers, this is the second video where we get to start talking about a new pattern in C-sharp. The pattern that I want to talk to you about is one of my favorites, it's called the Memento pattern. It's, it's, like a, it's like if you have one of those infinity stones when you get to control time, you get to go backwards and forwards in time, but in programming, in, uh, with your objects and with your, with your classes and whatnot. The idea here is uh, a lot of times, let's say, imagine you have two microservices and you're starting to process some, some data on one microservice that's a student and you're sending a request to another microservice for this student to be admitted and before you're sending the request you want to go and say okay mark this student as admitted and then send the request and let's say this microservice have failed now you have inconsistency of data and you have a problem you have changed a lot of stuff in your object here and you want to make that make sure that this this data actually makes sense and syncs with the data in here so Upon failure, you want to revert your data to its original status. So if you have a student in school, before you uh, start admitting the student or sending that request, uh, you're, you're, you're giving the student a status of pending, pending approval. But then if the process failed and you've already marked it as admitted, you want to go back and put it as pending approval. There is other implementations of the Memento pattern as well. Like for instance, if you're using um, if you're using any typing program or any program that offers the undo functionality, if you say here "Hello World" like that, you could go back in here and say "Undo," and that's basically what it's basically happening is that it's it's reverting it's reverting the object back to a, an original state. I don't know why it didn't take the entire sentence, but that's where it's saved. It's probably based on. Uh, certain criteria. So let's implement that. What's what's that memento pattern? Let's go ahead and create a new class and let's say that class is called student and let's give that student some properties. So let's say string status. So that's a student that has a status and let's have a constructor in here that takes in that instantiates this status to pending approval like that right and then there is another function that we want to build there's a function we want to build that says uh, 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 start start at middle admission admission process so before you start the admission process you're stamping your data which is the student in that case with uh, admitted right the problem with that is if something blows up and let's go give you an example here let's say I create I created that student in here and then let's say I have a try catch block in here and that just will resemble a fake error that happened I don't even need that X I could just go like that and let's say you know just just console we throw any exception it doesn't matter in here and let's say when I'm doing this uh, start admission process something blew up so I'm gonna throw an exception in here and say something blew up while I'm doing the start admission process the problem here is that the student status student status after failure will be admitted which is not what we want console uh, read key we don't want we don't want the student to be on admitted status because that means we're having inconsistency of data and we need somehow to find a way to revert that student object back in time to the point where it was before starting this new operation this is very high defensive programming especially when you're working with with uh, restful uh, services that are stateless you know you want to make sure that your current local state for your data makes sense so uh, let's 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 put another another uh, um, another line in here that says here's the student status before after processing or attempting to process right and let's throw one in here that says initial student status and that's what we want initial student status right so if I run my application now things will blow up 
and I'll say it was pending approval, started processing admitted, but after the failure, the student is also admitted. Imagine if your student object has like 20 properties across the entire object. I would question why you have an object with 20 processes, but with 20 properties, but let's just assume, right? And you want to revert all of that. It'll be very hard. It'll require a lot of data fixing. You need to go back and fix that data and make sure that everything is in place and you have to write scripts and it's a complete waste of time. Instead, you could implement the Memento pattern and I'm going to show you how to do that. We could build a class in here that call it Memento. And what this class has, it will instantiate itself by the same properties that your object that you want to revert back has. So as you could say string status, that's what you get. And you have a, let's throw a read only. Uh, string read only, let's say read only, uh, public read only uh, string uh, status. Status, like that. And what sitters or gears on that? These are read only. And we go and say this dot status equals status, whatever we passed in it. So you're passing in the same values that you want to be able to revert, right? But then back in here, we want to do that little modification. We want to instantiate a memento, a memento, um, uh, in, uh, what did I write? Not me memento, it's me, me mento. Let's do that. Memento. I think that's what's called. And let's say memento. Let's just call it memento, right? And when when we're in instantiating that student object, we want to go and say for that memento, let's uh, instantiate with the same uh, initial values that we had for the student, so we can revert back to that point. So let's pass in here and say this dot status. So I'm basically passing it its initial status, initial status. To that memento pattern and then I'm gonna throw here a method that says revert and what this method is going to do it's gonna go say go and go to set that status and get that memento uh, uh, member that we've created and give me the status from that member upon failure now things change forever now you're reverting back if we go to the program and we say upon failure, take that student and revert it to its original state. So I don't have to go back and fix a lot of data. Now when we run, let's see, our hypothesis here is that this will be pending approval, admitted, and then pending approval again. Is that the case? Let's see. There you go. Pending approval, or initial state, started processing, something blew up, revert, put the status in there, you're good to go. Now think about this for a while. It, it has some storage concerns, especially if you choose to have revert give you this option of date time. And you get to go back and say, revert my object to a certain point in time. So you gotta have some sort of dictionary in here that goes and looks up of copies of that object and reverse it to a certain point. So don't, don't, to a certain point. So don't, don't use this model excessively, especially if you're going to use the entire document in a database. If you have maybe three transitions, probably that'd be okay, depending on your uh, how much budget you have for storage. If not, then you probably need to visit other options. But for now, this would be one of the biggest defensive uh, programming mechanisms that I definitely recommend when you're running through stateless processes and calling other APIs and some other APIs are developed by people who don't know how to develop APIs so things break all the time you probably want to consider something like that and thank you for watching if you have any questions concerns please put it in the comment section I'm also gonna post a link about the memento pattern on Wikipedia it's very informative this is how I learned this and uh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs>